Okay, in this video we're going to look at the trapezoidal rule and for me the learning outcomes are going to be that I'm trying to get you to use the trapezoidal rule to approximate area, we don't know what the trapezoidal rule is yet, and apply the trapezoidal rule to in context or real life questions. The first thing I need to do is say to you, I need you to know what a trapezium is. And a trapezium is a four-sided figure with at least two sides parallel. A, B are the two parallel sides, and H is the length of the distance between them. So the formula for the area of a trape trapezium appears on page 8 of the booklet of formula and tables as shown. Here it is. Here the area is A plus B over 2, where A and B are the two lengths of the parallel lines, and H is the perpendicular distance between them. And what I would like to do straight away is to have a nice straightforward example of a question that asks you to get the area of a trapezium. All units are in centimetres. This is 8, this is 14, this is 9. And I've drawn this on its side compared with this one up here, but this is the way we're going to apply the trapezoidal rule in a minute. 8 and 14 are A and B over 2 times H, 8 plus 14 over 2 times 9, and we get the answer of 99 centimetres squared. Great. The next part is I'm just looking at a shape here. The shape is from P, from P to Q or Q to P, then P to S, and then from S to R, and we're trying to find the area between those three straight lines and the curve. And it's quite awkward to do, but there's a sneaky way of doing this where we say we'll divide the shape up into trapeziums. There's the first one there. So what we've got is a trapezium with the width of H, and here's A and B, the two heights, if you like, here. Move it across to here. There's a second trapezium. This width will be the same as the one before, which I'm just calling H, and then you've got this height and this height here. And as we progress across the page, you can see that each time we have a trapezium where each width is H, each the same width each time, and then we're using this height and this height here. As we go along, we come to the last one, what you'll see is the last one is the usual, five again is the width, and then we've got this height and this height here. People who are discerning, and I'm not very discerning, but if somebody points it out to me, I can see that side is only used once. The end side is only used once. But this little side here is used in this trapezium and in this one. So that's used twice. This is also used twice for the same reason. So when we come to look at our formula that's in the tables on page 12, the trapezoidal rule, has dots in it. Oh, students don't like dots. Some days I don't myself. One, two, three, four. The next one's going to be Y5. The last one's YN. What's the one in front of that? Well, it's YN minus one, then YN minus two, and so on. But look at the formula. The area is H over two. H, remember now, is the width. It's not the heights. So this bit here, that's H as well. The whole way it's consistent. Now, Y1 is only there once, and Y n, the last one is there once, all the others are doubled. They're there twice. So that's kind of nifty to notice. You don't have to notice it. And then just to say in English, the trapezoid rule says that the area is the width divided by 2, which is the first height plus the last height plus 2 times the sum of all the other heights. So armed with that, I'm all set to go to an easy, straightforward example. Of course, I'd say it's easy and straightforward. You may not agree initially. Use the trapezoidal rule to estimate the area of the shape, given the width of each strip is 5 centimetres, and all heights are in centimetres. So that bit's 5. This piece here is 5. Each strip is 5. The other thing is to look at it and ask yourself, can you count? Well, I can. There's y1. There's y2 y3, y4, y5, y6. Okay, they're the six heights. So then we write the area as h over 2, y1 plus y6. Remember, it was yn in the formula, but now we know it's with six heights. Twice the other ones in between. So this one is only there once, this one is only there once. So I've written everything out. The width is 5, y1 is 4, 
y2 is 10, y3 is 8, y4 is 4, so is y5, and the last one was 14y6. So then, if we just fill in the numbers, this is very straightforward, in the sense that you just read off everything now, h is 5, 5 over 2, into y1 plus y6, well y1 we saw was 4, y6 was 14, plus 2 times y2 plus y3 plus y4 plus y5, fill them in, and you get 175 centimetres squared. Once I have that out of the way, I'm ready to proceed to the main event. And the main event for me and for you here in this one is it's a trapezoidal rule in context. In other words, it's a real life application of this piece of maths. Two athletes, Barton and David, prepare for a 20 kilometer run. Barton eats a Mars bar for a blood sugar boost. David eats a piece of fruit for a blood sugar boost. Blood sugar levels are measured in things called millimolars. So the biology students may know that. When the Mars bar is eaten, the boost to blood sugar reaches a peak and fades quickly, as shown in figure one. Ooh, look, can't wait to see figure one. A piece of fruit, on the other hand, stays at a moderate level for a relatively longer period of time, as shown in figure one as well. So the main event for us now is when we look at this, here is figure one. And if I look at it, it's quite a scary looking picture initially because it shows Barton eating fruit. Okay, there's Barton. And David eats, sorry, Barton eats a Mars bar. Mars bar. A big peak for Mars bar. David eats the piece of fruit. It peaks and lasts longer, if you like. Now, the question says the amount A of blood sugar boost in millimolars is given by the area under the curve. What does that mean? What it means is, if we take David and the piece of fruit here, this shaded area corresponds to the boost in sugar that the piece of fruit gives them. So our job then becomes one of, can we find that red shaded area? And my answer to that is, it's a piece of cake. It's a trapezoidal rule. We're going to do it for the piece of fruit, and we're going to do it for the Mars bar. Also, too, if you read the question, it says, use the trapezoidal rule and the numerical data. I'm not sure I know what numerical data means from figure one to estimate A for each of the foods eaten. State which food gives the greatest boost to blood sugar. Justify your answer. Okay, numerical data is just look at the picture and use the numbers. Okay, 0, 30, 60. So they've done this for a 180 minute or three hour period. Up the side are the millimolars, one, two, three. So a Mars bar peaks at three millimolars for a blood sugar level and then drops off back to zero. Okay. And he's saying in the question, use the trapezoidal rule. And this is fairly typical in the exam. They'll give you some hints. So when I focus now, I'm saying I'm using a width of 30 minutes for each figure. Why would I do that? I don't know. It just, they were the numbers they seemed to infer to me there. So I said, let's make up 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. And then I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sections. And we know they're trapeziums. So we're trying to find the area of 6 trapeziums. And remember now, there's Y1. Its height is 0. Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6. Y7 is 0 as well. I like those two. Now, to get the other ones, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, this is numerical data. I have to try and read it off. So let's go up at 30 minutes, up to there. And I hope you agree that that's 3. So y1 is 3. y3, up and across. And you can see I've been very sneaky. I've picked that one, that it works really well. I've got 1. Oh, I like that. Then y4. Okay, here's y4 here. 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. I get it, Brendan, yeah, because there's 0.5. So each of these little gaps up the side were 0.1. So this is brilliant. Y5, I can see it as well. It's just up 0.2. Y6 is up 0.1. And here we go. I've read them from the figure, and all I'm asked to do is fill in the formula. You can see how careful I am. H over 2, Y1 plus Y7 plus twice the rest of them. Yes, you need to be that careful as well. H is 30, 30 over 2, 
0 plus 0, y1 was 0, remember? y7 was 0, okay? Plus 2 times, the other ones all added up. I get 2 times 4.7, all multiplied by 15, and I get 141 millimolar. And that is Barton and the Mars bar. I then do the same thing again, and one of the things I'd like to say just here is, Maths, I like maths in the sense that once I've done the Mars bar one, the piece of fruit is just the same deal again. I have to use the same width here because I want to be able to compare the boost from the Mars bar and the boost from the piece of fruit. So H is 30. And that's okay as well, except this time Y1 is 0, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6 and Y7 have to be read off the graph and Y7 is not 0. So if you look at that there, when I look at Y7, I come up to here and then go all the way across on my graph and it lands here, so that's 0 0.4. The other ones I read off as well. I'm just going to do Y2 for you, so I'm looking at this one here. Let's take the Y2. Here's Y2. Go all the way up to where you hit the graph. What height is that? Well, there's 1. 1.1, 1.2, 1 1.3. Yes, I'm pretty awesome. I have my readings done off. It's fairly simple. It looks a little bit intimidating. But once I've got that done, then H over 2 is 30 over 2. Y1 is 0. Y7 is 0 0.4. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not 0 like I might have liked it to be. And then it's 2 times each of the heights, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6 added up. And when I do it, you can see I'm just tricking around a little bit. The answer works out to be 141. Now, I've done that on purpose because now I'm telling you in my question, both foods give the same boost to blood sugar. And that's good enough. That's the answer. But just to point out, a slower release of blood sugar boost would be better for a 20 km runner. I think you'd agree with that. And most people who are involved, excuse me, <coughs> involved in athletics would um, get that for sure. And then I just said, look, eat the fruit, then run, forest, run. Thank you. Oh, I lost it. I lost there a bit. Brilliant. I know, I just I hate the cough.